let's talk a little bit about input gain. Now, this is so incredibly important and applies to anything audio. Not just Electrosonics product, but every audio product on the planet. So this is critical. If you get input gain and you get your gain structure set right up front, your audio systems will fall into line and behave for you like you planned them to do. Blow this part of the setup in your installation and you will be agonizing for days trying to get everything to work right. And there's a couple of reasons for it. One is that all audio systems, everything that has a DSP processor, wireless microphones, anything that relates to an audio signal will give you its best performance when the gain structure is properly set. And there's a couple of reasons for that. First of all, one is signal to noise ratio. When you look at the signal of a system, let's look at this entire, let's view this as an entire system. You have a microphone going to its preamp, the microphone, the, that amplified signal then goes to some signal processing and all this signal processing may be part of your DSP signal processor or they may be discrete components. It really doesn't matter. Then that goes ultimately to an amplifier and then to a loudspeaker for amplification in the room. Or it might alternately run off to a recording system, which is even more critical than a loudspeaker system. So here you've got a complete signal chain. So let's look at what happens in the audio signal. When you start out, you've got a microphone, and let's say that's a dynamic mic. A dynamic mic has no noise. It's a passive device. So the only signal it generates is what's a result of people talking and room noise and so on. So if no one's talking in the system, or if someone is talking, it's generating very, very low voltages. I mean, we're talking way down there in the, in the millivolts. So we've got a very low voltage signal. I mean, this, even if they're talking, it's all right down here. And then we hit the preamplifier. And what a lot of people fail to understand is that in any sound system, almost any sound system, this is the most powerful amplifier in the system. Yes, it can't drive a speaker, but it is doing the greatest amount of amplification because it is the device that is going to raise the level of the microphone up to line level. This is your mic level signal, say at minus 60 dBU, and you want to get it up to line level, 0 dBU. Why do you want to get it up that high? And maybe even higher. Some, some systems work best at plus 4 dBU, and we'll talk a little bit about that. So we get to 0 dBU here, and what we've done is we've amplified our signal now to a signal that we can work with. That gives the, some meat to the bones, basically, of the audio signal, and that then allows the audio processor to do whatever it does, and your level will vary across the board until it gets to the amplifier where it's jacked up again to speaker level outputs, and then that goes to your speakers. So you have these varying levels of amplification, but the preamp does the most amount of amplification. But another thing happens in your sound system the moment you hit the preamp. You get to your signal noise. The, the noise generated by the audio systems. All products that are electronic have a noise floor. So what happens is in the preamp you also have noise floor here. This is generated by the preamp and really good ones have a very low noise floor. It might be way down here at minus 80. Lower priced ones could be higher but at some point you've got noise in the system. Now when it hits these devices here it stays constant. It gets a little bit more level because the, the other devices in the system add their own noise. So the noise builds as you go through various devices until you get to the amplifier. In which case the amplifier then takes the, amplifies the noise because it can't distinguish between this signal and the noise. It amplifies both. So you end up with your noise coming up as well. And the difference between these two signals is your signal to noise ratio. So what happens in a system where you decide to not amplify the preamp very much? Instead of taking it up to 0 dBU, you only take it up to minus 30. You only give it 30 decibels of amplification. So your, your signal is here. It comes up to this point. That's all you amplify it to. You come over here and then you still have to amplify it to your required sound pressure level up here. But what happens to your noise? 
this difference here comes up with the amplifier here. And now your signal to noise ratio is much worse. Instead of being all the way from up here to down here, say 70 decibels difference, you may up, end up with only a 30 decibel difference. And now your sound system goes shh. Sounds like a waterfall. I can't tell you how many sound systems I've walked into that you need to take a look at our system, it's got a problem. And you walk in the room and what I hear is shh and the amplifiers are cranked up full. That's the problem. What you want to avoid is that issue. So, what you need to do now is simply readjust your system and get this amplification level back up. The other problem that occurs is here's this poor DSP processor here. It's designed to operate with a line level signal internally. The mathematics work best when you've got lots of signal to work with. And when you fail to give it much signal, the difference between it and the internal noise makes it more difficult for it to apply its DSP processing algorithms. Or if it's analog devices like a compressor, a limiter, and an equalizer, you still have that problem. You're going to have operational issues because they don't have enough signal to work with. So you've given yourself a double whammy by setting your gain structure incorrectly in a system. What you want to do is you want to go to um, up, get your signal up to 0 dBU or plus 4. Which do you pick? That depends on the weakest link in your chain. When you look at the specifications for various audio products, you want to look at the entire line of products within the system and find out what the maximum level is. For example, on our products, it's plus 20. There are some professional uh, uh, touring products designed for large sound systems like uh, the concert tours for the big acts. Some uh, products will go to plus 24, some will go to plus 28. Whichever is the lowest common denominator in your system, subtract 20 from that and that should be your operational line level signal that you're going to put as a standard through your system. So if in our system, if we're, we're going to clip, we're going to start clipping at plus 20. So you want to give yourself 20 decibels of headroom. That's so in case somebody screams into the mic or drops it or the drums hit really hard, you've got a whole lot, that's a hundred times difference in signal. So you go for zero dBU. If everything in your chain is capable of handling plus 28, you could take your signal all the way up to plus eight. Now let's talk about how that works setting it up in our system.